it's time to go on a sandy safari in search of tigers. Tiger beetles, that is. Tiger beetles run around on the sand looking for prey here on the open beach. They're fast runners and flyers, so we have to have a sharp eye and quick reflexes in order to catch one. There's one. Okay, when you spot a tiger beetle, move in really slowly, crouching down, getting ready for the pounce. Hold that net out, and when it's distracted, strike. There we go, got one. Okay, now, when you've caught a tiger beetle, hold it gently from the outside of the net like this. Then, slip your other hand inside and gently pull it out. Now, a good way to hold a tiger beetle is either like this, so you can see its cool face and jaws, or on the sides like this, so you can see its back or its shiny belly. Now, when you pull out a tiger beetle, it's gonna try and bite you. But don't worry, those jaws look impressive, but they don't draw blood, they just pinch the skin. But if you're concerned about being bitten by anything, just hold it from the outside of the net when it's still in there and drop it into a container. How did the tiger beetle get its name? First, many have stripes on their backs, kind of like tigers. And second, they're fast-moving predators of small insects on the beach. Tiger beetles come out in the morning to hunt when the sand is just starting to get warm. As it gets closer to noon and the sand starts getting hotter, they start running around on their tiptoes to keep their bodies away from the hot sand. You'll also see them running between shady areas along the foredoom. With big eyes, big jaws, fast running legs, and wings to fly, tiger beetles are excellently designed hunters. For their size, they're considered the fastest running creature on land. Some North American species can run 29 body lengths a second. That'd be like driving a car 130 miles per hour. One species in Australia can run 170 body lengths a second. That'd be like driving a car 760 miles per hour. That's like a jet breaking the sound barrier. Engage hyperdrive. Speed is good for catching food and for escaping predators. When a tiger beetle has caught an insect, it doesn't really eat it. Similar to an antlion, it chews it and sucks out all its juices. It's kind of like putting all your food in a blender and drinking it. Tiger beetles don't drink water either. They chew wet sand or soil and suck out the water. Tiger beetles change dramatically from a larva to an adult. Similar to antlions, baby tiger beetles live in the sand. But instead of having pits, they live in perfectly circular holes kind of like someone took a straw and punched a hole in the ground. Like the antlion, tiger beetles go through metamorphosis. The worm-like larva turns into a pupa and then changes into the fast-running adult we see on the beach. The dunes are places of change, and tiger beetles and antlions change as well, from sand-dwelling larva to adults that move and fly above the ground. Tiger beetles are my favorite kind of beetle. It's a lot of fun to go looking for them out on the dunes, but it's also fun to keep them for a little while. Once you've caught some tiger beetles, you need a proper home for them. You'll need a tank, sand, and some dry dog food. Put sand or soil in the tank from the area where you caught the beetles. Then spritz water in a small spot to give them some moisture. You don't have to catch bugs for your tiger beetles to eat. Instead, you can feed them dog food. I'm serious. Soak some dry dog food in water until it expands like a wet sponge. Put it in the tank and replace it when it dries up. You can also keep antlions in a very similar setup. Antlions need about three inches of sand to dig their burrows. Drop in one or two ants a day to keep them fed and keep part of the sand moist, but not too wet because they need loose sand to trap their prey. Tiger beetles and antlions are a lot of fun to watch. If you get a chance to keep some for a few days, set up a tank and give it a try. Then release them back into the wild right where you found them.